This is a breadboard. I've been teaching electronics for a long time and I cannot tell you how many people have absolutely no idea how this thing works. So let's talk about it. What is the purpose of this thing? Where does this even come from? Why do we call this a breadboard? It doesn't really look like bread. I don't think I can eat it. Please help me. All right, look, a breadboard is very simple. Back in the day, people wanted to quickly test their electronic circuits. So what did they do? Well, they used a piece of wood that they could find, sometimes a breadboard, and then they would hook up their electrical circuits to it to test them out. And it's that simple. That's where it comes from. All right, so how does this thing work? It simply allows us to make quick and easy electrical connections. So in order to understand how this thing works, we're gonna use a multimeter. We're gonna set it to continuity mode. Continuity mode allows me to check for a low resistance path. If these two probes have a good connection between them, this is gonna be. And we're gonna look at how we can make a good electrical connection using this breadboard. Now look, I'm gonna stick multimeter probes directly into the breadboard to illustrate a point. When you do this, you're gonna damage your breadboard. So I don't recommend it, but you can if you really want to. Obviously you hear this thing beeping, I'm gonna turn that off, but look, I've got my two probes in this row. By doing that, I've created an electrical connection between these two points. So if I turn it to continuity mode, it's gonna beep. If I take a look at my meter, I can see that my resistance is 0.1 ohms. So these two points, have a very low resistance between them. In other words, I've made an electrical connection between this probe and this probe. This is the entire goal of a breadboard, to make a good, quick electrical connection. Is it as good as a solder? No, but it gets the job done most of the time. And so it's quick and easy because I can just pull the probes out and do something else without having to desolder. And if you've ever had to desolder something, you know it's a real pain. Now the next question you might ask is, well, where are the connections? Is, is this point connected to this point? Is this point, this point, this point? What, what points are actually connected to each other? Okay, it's pretty simple. On the sides of your breadboard, you'll find the bus strip or the power rails, often referred to as just the rails. This particular column, all the way down, these are all connected to each other. And I could go in there with my meter and test it. Oh, I don't have to damage my breadboard. I'm gonna go ahead and start using these things called jumper wires. Jumper wires are simply wires, right? Doesn't matter what color I use, they just allow me to make an easier connection with my multimeter probes make a connection there, and then I can touch this spot here. Now what if I move this down the line? Let's see if I'm still connected down here. Yes, it's connected all the way down. Now if I move it over onto this second column, right, this blue, on the blue line, you can see that I'm, I'm not getting any indication that these are connected, and they're not. Right? These are completely separate, they're isolated from each other. This column here is isolated from this column here. So everything from here all the way down is connected. And then from here all the way up is connected. That's the same thing is true on this other side. One way you can actually see that visually. So if I come over here and I peel the back off this breadboard, you can actually see how there's a metal conductor out here and all these are connected. It almost looks like they're split up there, but they are connected all the way down. So you can see where the connections are made. Now, Already, this should give you a little indication that the center of the breadboard is gonna work differently. Because you can see here, we have the rows, also called the terminal strips of our breadboard on the back. And you can see that this row isn't connected to the row below it or the row next to it. So there's basically five points, one, A, B, C, D, and E, that you can connect to on that first row. And that's it, that's all you're connecting to. If you connect on this side of the breadboard, that's a a different area. For instance, if I put my wire in A and I put a wire over in I, the question is, are these two points connected? Are these two wires connected? The answer is no, they are not. The only way for me to connect these two wires on the breadboard is to put them in the same row in this case. Now, what if I did want to have something go from row one here on the A, B, C, D, E to row one here on F, G, H, I, J? Well, I need to use the jumper wire to actually make an electrical connection uh, from one point of the row to the other point. So I can connect one E to one G and we have an electrical connection. Let's prove it to ourselves. All right, so now the question is, is the yellow wire connected to the black wire? Well, let's find out. Yes, they are. This is good news. Okay, so the first question I have is, is my yellow wire on one E connected to the yellow wire electrically connected to the wire on 10E, right? So I have a yellow wire here, I have an orange wire here, and I have a yellow wire here. 
Well, if I come in here and check with my meter, yes, there is an electrical connection because everything on row one here, A through E is connected, then the orange wire connects to row 10, which is connecting to my yellow wire here. Now the question is, is my yellow wire up here connected to my red wire over here on row 10, letter J? No, there is no electrical connection. And if you think there is, that's because you don't understand that row 10, A through E, is not connected to row 10, F through J. These are not connected to each other. Okay, so I went ahead and changed the circuit up a bit. I have my yellow wire still open over here. I have an orange wire here. I now have a yellow wire connecting 10E to 10F. So the question I have for you now is, is the yellow wire connected to the red wire? Yes, they are. They're electrically connected now because I was able to make this connection right here. So as you go to move from an electrical schematic to your breadboard, there's a couple key things you need to know. The first thing you need to do is identify the components used in your electrical schematic. So in this case, we're gonna need a red LED, a 220 ohm resistor, and some sort of supply, which in this case, I'm gonna use a nine volt battery. All right, in this case, it calls for a nine volt source. So you could either use your nine volt battery or you could use a power supply. From here, you need to understand how those components are connected in the circuit. The two primary things you need to ask yourself, are they connected in series, parallel, or series parallel? So in this case, we have a series circuit. So we need to connect all the components so that all the current flows from into one component into the next, and that there's no alternative paths for current to flow. Another question we need to ask ourselves is, do any of the components have a polarity to them. Certain components such as LEDs and capacitors often have a polarity, right? So this capacitor right here has an anode and a cathode where the cathode is the short leg also denoted by this silver line right here. Same thing with this LED, right? The short leg is the cathode, the long leg is the anode. We want the cathode to be on the lower potential side. So when we connect this into our circuit, we gotta make sure we put the leg of our cathode into the lower potential side, which would normally be your black. Practically what this means is for this battery, we wanna have that leg connected to the black part of the battery. So right here, you can see that I have a resistor where current can flow into this leg of the resistor, through the resistor, into that leg, into row 25, into this leg of my LED and out that leg. The cathode of my LED is on the right side the anode is on the left side. So let's see what happens when I connect my battery here. There we go. So the light is able to light up. Everything is functioning correctly. Okay, so just like before, we're gonna go from a circuit diagram to the breadboard. So the first things we wanna do is take a look at our circuit and recognize all the components in the circuit that we're gonna need to build it. Once again, we're gonna need a red LED, a 220 ohm resistor, a battery for supply, and also a 1000 microfarad capacitor. Once again, as we're building this, we got to keep something in mind. We got to keep the polarity of our components in mind. So we got to ask ourselves, you know, what is the polarity of this capacitor? What is the polarity of my LED? And we got to make sure that the anode and the cathode are correctly positioned in the circuit. Okay, so in this circuit, we've taken our schematic and we've gone to the breadboard. I have my capacitor is in parallel with my resistor and my LED. When I'm gonna connect my positive polarity on this side of the circuit and my negative polarity on this side of the circuit. The circuit's gonna function very similar to how it did before, right? So the LED is still getting power, right? It's showing that current is still able to flow through that part of the circuit. Now what's gonna happen as I take off my, I'm gonna take off the supply, take out the battery, and the capacitor, which has been charging up this whole time, will continue to power that LED for a little bit. And so you can see it takes a little bit longer to, to dim all the way. Let's see that one more time. So as we make another connection there, there's truly two circuits going on here. There's two, sorry, there's two different paths going on here. One is keeping the LED lit. One is charging that capacitor. And when I remove that, all right, you can see that that stays lit. Now, if I take this capacitor out and we, we get rid of that part of the circuit, let's see what the consequences are, right? I my LED will still light up, and as I take it out, it immediately goes off. Okay, now I wanna show you the consequences of what's called a short circuit. On my left side, I have a circuit that's been created correctly where 
both the resistor and LED are in series with one another. And when I come in, everything works as expected. My LED turns on, it doesn't overheat because there's not too much current going through it. Okay, now let's create a circuit that will have an intentional short in it. And a circuit that I see students accidentally make quite often, right? So I'm gonna have a resistor here in this row with my LED over here. So students think what's gonna happen is, as I put my lead there, that as I make a connection on this side, that current is gonna go through this resistor, through this right leg of the LED, down here into there. But that's not what happens. And if you see, if I keep making connection, we get one large blast of light and then nothing else. Well, that's because we just overloaded this LED with too much current. The reason is this resistor is not in series with my LED. What's happening is current's traveling in from this wire into that row. Most of the current is ignoring this resistor completely going down the parallel path through the bus bar behind here into this leg, into the LED, overloading it, and now it's destroyed. So this is the consequence of a short circuit, right? I have students all the time think that this resistor is in series with this, but it's not. They've created a parallel path, and really nothing's going to go through this resistor or, you know, ever. It's a, it's a pointless, pointless circuit. You should never have both legs of a resistor in the same row of a breadboard. But that is an example of a short circuit because what's happened is I've shorted out this resistor. My circuit is not going in the intended path that I wanted it to. That is the whole idea of a short circuit. A short circuit means that you've, you have some ideal circuit in mind, but there's some short created either by negligence or by damage to the circuit that causes current to flow in a path it was never intended to. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned a lot. Want to apply your new breadboard skills? Check out our project on building your own SPO2 monitor at htm-workshop.com. Also, check out some of our other videos.